Now listen, prayer sometimes seems to be a mystery, don't it? How, somebody says, how can I pray for things that I need and give? That's not natural to it. That's not normal. <laughs> you think Jesus was normal speaking to the trees? You think Jesus was normal when he spoke to that storm and he called? Well, if Jesus spoke to those things, I, I'm going to speak to them too. Welcome to Faith Connection, brought to you by the Ministry of Faith Life Church in Hindman, Kentucky, with Pastor Max Sloan. Join us this week as we delve into the Word of God and experience the wonders of Jesus Christ for healing, prosperity, salvation, and daily living. And now, with today's inspiring message, Pastor and Teacher Max Sloan. Hallelujah. Oh man, I've got snaps of fool this morning. God, hallelujah, full of watermelon, cantaloupe, and everything. Stuff. Well, I didn't eat no steak, but I'm full of the Word of God this morning. And I pray that it that it gets down in us and, and we hear it. Now, let me, and we're going to open up this morning. Let me see, they might have been something that I needed to do here. Yeah, they are. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to read out of this, uh, go to Luke chapter 4. And God told me to, to, to let this be my first scripture every Sunday. Luke chapter 4. Let me see where that's at. I don't know where that's at. I don't know. Let's see. I don't believe that's it, but that's a good. Glory to God. Let's see. I didn't write this down, but does anybody know? Where he's talking about, but he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I've come to preach to the poor. We're going to find this because this is really, really real good. Now, I'm not going to be in no hurry this morning. Did you get please sleep last night? 418. I was pretty close. Hallelujah. Now, the Lord spoke to me and he said, I want you to read this because I read this in every synagogue that I'm in. He said that. And he did. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now, the Spirit of the Lord is the anointing of the Lord. It's the yoke-destroying, burden-breaking of Isaiah 10, 27. The anointing. We've got to have that anointing. And this morning, God's anointing is going to destroy some yokes and break some burdens. I speak that with boldness. Amen? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Now, why do you think that He... Am I too loud? Why do you think he'd come to preach the gospel to the poor? So they wouldn't be poor no more. But God said, the word of God also says, we'll have the poor you will have with you always. And the Bible says, if we turn a blind eye to the poor, we'll have many a curse. Ooh. It says here, and he hath sent me to heal the broken heart. Have anybody broken heart or ever been broken heart in this place this morning? Sure, I have. He come to heal that, to preach deliverance to the captives. You think God is held in bondage? Ding dongs. <laughs> er, chocolate fudge cake. Don't say it. Don't go there, Pastor Max. So the said, don't you go. Now, I'm just kidding with you. But anything that's got us in bondage that we think, just like last night, I'll tell you what. Like last night, I went down there and supper with Johnny in Woodrow. It was Katrina's birthday, happy birthday to you. <laughs> and I sat there the whole time. They was eating steaks. I had to eat a piece of red meat in a year and a half. And they were sitting there, and I put it off and put it off. But my flesh went over. I took one little bite, cut one little square around saw it, and I ate that. I shouldn't have eaten that. Why? Because I just shouldn't, because that's not, you know, I, I, I've been struggling with the G word. And I shouldn't have done that, but we're going somewhere with this, but my flesh overrode my spirit. Now, if God, God thank, thank God you all can eat steak, praise God. I, I sit there and sweat, big drop sweat going down my cheeks while Woodrow's in that day. <laughs> Luke. 
Man, I said right across the table, just going at it. I said, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> We're going somewhere. And he said to preach deliverance to the captives. Anybody captive to anything this morning that you think you must have, that you've got to have, but you don't? Come on, somebody. And recovering of the sight to the blind. Now that goes two ways. He come to heal the blind eyes physically and he come to open the blind eyes of the church. Spiritually. So we must see. If we don't see five acres of property out there in the spirit, we'll never have it. If we don't see a church worth uh, 700 to a million dollars out there, now see, it might come this way. We might have to build it in phases. But I see that. I see that land. I see that home for abused women and children. I see that. So I want to show you something this morning. If we can see it, we can have it. Praise God. The Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy, God said, He says, if you can, He said, see, I have given you the land. They didn't have it physically. See, I have given you the land. So he said, now I want you to go in and possess it. Folks, we can't sit around and not be uh, strong in the spirit. I mean, we just can't because that's where everything from God comes from, from the inside out, not from the outside in. And he said, to set, uh, recovering or something about and set at liberty them that are bruised. Bruised, been hurt, been really, really hurt. And to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. What is that? That's the year of Jubilee. Every 50 years in the book of Leviticus, the year of Jubilee came, and that was where everybody's debts was canceled. Oh, glory to God. We just went through last year, 2017, was the physical year of Jubilee. Now, now we might, you might not be excited about that, but I get excited, praise God, when my debts are canceled. And when I have more than enough to meet my needs so I can help Brother Ryan in his. So that's what God Spirit told me to read this morning. Because see, now I've read that, guess what? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The anointing of God is upon me this morning. Now see, you've got to, you've got to learn to receive the Word of God, but you've got to learn to receive from a man and woman of God. Well, praise God. That said, I go to Mark 1. Glory to God. Father, I thank you this morning for your word. I thank you for the impossible being done this morning. I thank you, Father God. Thank you that we must believe for the impossible and stop believing for the possible. And I'll give you praise for that in Jesus' name. Mark 1. Now, this is the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Hang on. It says, now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of come by help me. Can you talk? The what? He come preaching the kingdom of God. You know what happened for 2,000 years? People didn't preach the kingdom of God. They still preached the law of Moses. But Jesus come to preach the things of the kingdom and how it works. We don't have to wait to go to heaven get into the kingdom of heaven. We are in the kingdom of God now. He said he come to preach the gospel of the kingdom and say the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. And that's very simple. The kingdom of God in another place it says it's near. Now when was it near? See Jesus had come, now listen to the book Jesus had come to his own people, the Jews. Remember the Bible says he came to his own and his own received him not? I'm going to show you some people here that their time was not yet, but their faith moved Jesus into a manifestation. Why? Because your faith rules over time. The spirit of faith, Paul said, I give you the we got the spirit of faith. So faith is a spirit. And to receive the things of God, we've got to receive them by the spirit. 
not by the physical realm, not by our physical bodies. They are spiritual blessings, Ephesians 1, 3 says, are spiritual blessings before they ever get to the natural. Now, I don't know about you, but as I'm getting older, I didn't say older, as I'm getting older, I'm believing God's Word a lot stronger. Why? Because He's given me a, He says in His Word, the life that He's given us. And whatever we can believe God for up to that time, He said you can have 120 years life. But most people read Psalms 90 over there and it says that we have 70 or 80. But see, if you read the context of that, that was talking about the people that were in the wilderness. All they did was gripe and complain and murmur and by that, by that, by that. Oh, Pastor Moses, you brought us into this wilderness to let us die. I just wish that die, Moses. I wish we'd go back to Egypt into bondage. Has anybody know going? I believe you preached in the right church this morning. Huh? I've done the same thing. But he come to preach the kingdom of God and over in Mark 4, I didn't have this down, uh, Katrina, or I'd give it to you. I'm sorry. In, John, in, uh, in Mark 4, in verse 11, right? Now look at this. We're, we're getting this set up here and then we're going to go with it, okay? Mark 4, verse 11. And he said to them, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. Have you ever heard anybody say, well, you know, it's not, it's not God's will not for us to know it all. Well, my Bible says on 1 John that we do know it all. And therefore you can call me a know it all. And it says right here, it is given to you, to born again Christians, to know the mystery of the kingdom of God and how it works. Now watch this. But unto them that are without, talking about the world or the people that's unsaved, they, they don't have a chance until they get born again to live in the kingdom and to receive the, king, the kingdom of God's riches that it's got in there. So, all these things are done in parables that see they may see and not perceive. That's what's happening today. People see the preacher preaching. People see the word of God but they don't perceive it. And hearing, they may hear and not understand. <laughs> Folks, we have to hear and understand the Word of God. That's why I'm preaching these things over and over and over and over and over and over and over, and over again. Because that's why people preach salvation every Sunday, over and over and over again. They preach it until somebody gets saved. I'm going to preach the kingdom of God. I'm going to preach the word of God on faith until you get healed. Until you get delivered. Until you have prosperity enough for you and somebody else. Amen. Amen. Seeing and understanding, lest the end time they should be converted to sin. Now watch this. It says, Know ye not this parable. If we don't know what the, the parable of, uh, of, of, of soil the seed is, We'll never know no more. Because see, the whole kingdom of God works on seed time, sowing, and reaping. Are you listening? If you sow the word of God, you're going to get a harvest. Oh, Lord Jesus, this is good. So you see, it says in the parable, the sower soweth the word. I'm not going into that today, but we're going to go into some more things. Now listen, prayer sometimes seems to be a mystery, don't it? How, somebody says, how can I pray for things that I need and give them? That's not natural. To, that, that's not normal. <laughs> you think Jesus was normal speaking to the trees? You think Jesus was normal when he spoke to that storm and it calmed? Well, if Jesus spoke to those things, I, I'm going to speak to them too. Go ahead, that's all right. Everybody, since I started preaching 34 years ago, everybody said, he's crazy, he's a fool. They told Barb, they said, why don't you do something with that man? She said, I can't. 
Well, that's exactly how I got married. I remember one time I was I was in the bedroom where I fasted. Now fasting has got one thing to do with us receiving what God has for us. What it has got to do with is getting yourself into the place to where you can hear and see what God's doing. Amen. So I was fasting in there. Somebody with Bible was, and I ain't got a thing against country music. I'm calm to do. But at that time, I had things to do. I had to get healed. I'd lost about 40 pounds because I got into a medical book and believed it wanted to get the Word of God. Medical book said, you got this, you got this, and I had every symptom that I read. <laughs> and, and you know, the devil can put lying symptoms on us. But see, I, she said, let's go, let's go fight. Well, I said, I ain't going to no, and it, no, it was, let's go to Long John Silver's. I said, no, I ain't going to Long John Silver's. Why? I said, I'm fasting. Now, at that time, I didn't know that fasting has nothing to do with bringing your answer to pass, but it had everything to do with me getting the junk, getting the kingdoms out of the body, getting the, 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 the what was that you had last night? Fudge cream, fudge salt. Your hot fudge cake, getting that out of your system. Why? Because we, the, if we put these things first, we're not going to be able to hear God. Now that's for everything. If we read our newspapers every day and every day and every day, God says, pass that newspaper that day, can you quit reading it? Huh? Come on, church. Yep. God is a powerful God. He's a sensitive God. He he knows what we need if we'll just listen to him and do it. Well, praise God. But see, we got to know what's going on behind the scenes, behind the scenes of prayer. we got to know what, from the minute we say in, in, in Mark 11, 23, the minute we believe and we receive then, what's going on behind the scenes until we get the manifestation? Oh, Lord Jesus, say thank you, Lord. Mm. For verily I say to you that whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea. I was somebody said, well, I wish you quit reading that scripture. Well, when you get it, I quit. <laughs> when you hear and understand, I want something else. <laughs> because see, until we do, I'm gonna do this to every symptom in my body, in Luke's body, in your body is healed. Because healing is not a natural thing. Medicine can cover up and bring healing for a time. But God's word stands forever. It never returns void. And we've got to stand on that. So if we will say to the mountain that's in our lives and shall not doubt in my heart and my spirit, but shall believe that those things, what things, what things you desire, what things uh, which you say shall come to pass, he shall have also whatever we say. That's why people are so depressed. We've said it for about six months. I'm so depressed. I, I just don't even want to get out of bed. Think about what we're saying. Think about how powerful your words are. The whole kingdom of God, the whole answers to prayer hinges on what you're saying. Now, but see, if we know what's going on behind the scenes, we are more likely not to give up from the minute we believe we receive until the time we have it. That's where the war is. From the time you say it, oh, I've got some good stuff here. 1 John 5, 14, now look at this. It says, and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Now, did God lie there? Is God lying? When he said, if you ask anything according to my will, you can have it. I hear you, and you can have it. And he goes on down, and he says, and if we know that he hears us, you've got to know, and you've got to understand that God has heard you. Why does he hear you? Because you asked according to his will. Whatsoever we ask, we know we have the petitions that we desire. Petitions is just prayer. 
So if you ask anything according to the last will and testament of Jesus Christ, this is the word. You're going to have it. Somebody died and leaves us in the wheel. Says, you, you, I'm going to leave you a million dollars. You wouldn't doubt that. You'd say, glory to God. Woo-hoo, hallelujah. That's in my wheel. Well, it's in your wheel. Amen, hallelujah. Now, folks, let me tell you something. You'll probably not see me anymore after Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. And white sweat. Because I'm a little bit tired of people who come to church to get entertained. But I can preach that to the, the best of them. I can be T.D. Jackson. If I want to. And I'm not being critical. But see, what happens in the middle of the night when you wake up and there ain't nobody there to get you excited? What's going to happen then? You need the word of the living God. Amen. I love that. I'll go listen to these guys every now and then because I need coming up. Glory to God. My flesh needs that. But my spirit needs the word of God. And that's why that God's called me. So I want you to go back to the mountains and preach my word. And I got to think about that. My pastor's wife down at where I live. I preached one night, she come up, she said, Max, you're an old mountain preacher. And I thought, I started to get offended at that. I said, man, I'm a mountain preacher. I said, it's the word of God in the word of you. But I got to looking, and I got to thinking, my culture is in the Appalachian Mountains. Oh, I love you, Lord. That guy sang, Jesus, I praise your holy name. That's our culture. People understand that better than they do. Something hip hop. I don't even know that no way. <laughs> but God sent me back to these mountains because he said there's people in the south <clears throat> region of Kentucky, not just in Knox County, that needs to hear the word. Now please, you people that's watching this, if you're, if you're watching this and you're a preacher, Thank God you preach the word how God wants you to preach. Praise God. You exhort how you want to preach. But God's called me to be a pastor and a teacher. I love people and I love the word of God. Somebody said the other day, they said, they said, Pastor Max, I really think that you're one of the best teachers in the word I ever heard. I didn't get puffed up. I just said, Lord, thank you that I'm in, the, I'm in your will. Preach and teach what you want me to teach. Actually, 99% of Jesus' ministry was going and teaching the Word. The cure for unbelief, as Brother Luke says, talked about this morning, is the teaching of the Word. In, Mar in, in, in the Gospel, Jesus went to a town of Nazareth, and he could not, he didn't say he would not, he couldn't do no miracles except he except healed a few. Now, according to the Bible, the few was eight. Because see, in the ministry of Noah, he preached 120 years and only had eight people in his congregation. That's what keeps me going. I've done past eight. <laughs> I'm believing God that this church is going to go. But we need people to make it grow, make it go. Amen? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Now what makes us know that we have our prayers answered? Because we ask according to his will. First Corinthians 15, 50, now I say, uh, now I say, brethren, that the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption and incorruption. What that means, neither your flesh and blood, your flesh and body don't inherit the things of the kingdom of God first. Our spirit inherits them, and then if we stay with it. And don't give up. We'll have it. I tell you this, brothers and sisters, our bodies of flesh and blood cannot have part in the kingdom, in God's kingdom. Something that will ruin cannot have part in something that will never ruin. The word of God's never going to ruin. 
The spirit's never going to run. See, your spirit that will never die. It's going to be somewhere when we die. Born again Christians are going to be in heaven. But listen to this. We're not going to stay up in heaven all of our lives. The Bible says there's a new Jerusalem coming down in the book of Revelations. And the Bible says that we are coming back with Jesus Christ to set up his kingdom on this earth. And when Jesus raptures us out of this life, out of this world, then we'll have a glorified body. No more sickness, no more nothing. But when you die, your spirit go to heaven because Paul said to be absent from the body. He's talking about your spirit. To be absent from the body is the presence of the Lord. Is this okay? Okay. All right. So we see that the things of flesh and blood cannot inherit. Let me give you this, and I'm not being critical then. We have heard doubt and unbelief in, in our churches. I've heard it. People are hearing it right now. And it, it, it won't get us nothing. But if we preach faith, it gets us something. Now, and we have some songs of doubt and unbelief so many times. I remember one song, praise God, that we sung about every altar call. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. Now, Matthew 28, 20, Jesus said, Lord, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Why do we want to say, pass me not? He ain't going to pass you up. Huh? No. And he says, hear my humble cry. Well, the Bible says in, in Hebrews 4, 16, it says that we are to come boldly into the throne room to find help in time of need. Now, this is busting religious. It, we're kicking over sacred cows this morning. Because, see, we have been taught that and we have sung songs like that and they, they're, they're okay if, if you want to sing them. You want to use them in your church. That's all right. You know, you're the preacher of your church and I'm the preacher of this church. Amen? But see, I do the same song but like that. I love you, Lord. I know you are the king of kings because that's singing directly. Worship is singing directly to God Almighty. It's not singing songs about Jesus. It's singing songs to Jesus. Now, does everybody understand that I wasn't being critical when I said that? Because I give you two scriptures that says that we don't have to sing like that. Are you still with me? You ain't mad at me, are you? You ain't mad at me, are you? Okay, praise God. He's preaching the word. Now, for 2 Peter 3 8, now look what this says. I'm sorry, friend. Won't you just slap me a time or two and say, hey, give up the plan, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm just going to have to come back. What's this say right here? But beloved, who's he talking to? Talking to the church. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. So that shows me that there's no time in the spirit. That shows me that faith doesn't operate by time that is on this earth. That shows me that faith rules over time in this earth. Because see, one day is as a thousand years. Ain't that good? Praise God. We all time. And of course, now if you work a job, you better be on time. I'm not talking against you. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the things of the Spirit of God, the things in receiving the things out of the kingdom of God. It doesn't take no time. So my question is, why do we think we have to wait a year to have that land? I'm going to show you why. That, we have, that, that, that happens a lot, just in a minute. So one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day with the Lord. Faith has no time, and God only answers prayer now. You don't answer them when you, have, when you can see it. You say, well, God answered my prayer. I can feel I'm here. 
God answers your prayer the minute you believe and receive. Amen. Amen. Now listen, stay with me. God does not operate in time. Faith in the Word of God rules over time. Proverbs 24, 5 and 10. Let me show you something right here. Here's what happens to us. Proverbs 24. Did I give you that in Korean? Now you might do something about that. <laughs> Proverbs 24, 5. Now watch this. A wise man is strong. Yea, a man of knowledge increases strength. Now what gives us strength in the spirit? The revelation knowledge of the Word of God. A wise man gets in the Word, speaks the Word, believes the Word, praise God, and then we'll have strength. You can be, listen, if we're sick in our bodies, if something's bothering us, the place for us to be is not sitting in the recliner or sleep, it's sitting in the recliner or building our faith with the Word of God. Amen. Folks, you don't know how much time every week goes in to be preparing something like this to give you. Amen. So verse 10, but here it says, if, if thou faint in the day of adversity, what's adversity? That's in the spirit. That's when the devil comes against you. He's your enemy. But if you thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. What does the Bible say in the New Testament? If you quit and grow weary in well-doing, you won't reap. It's okay. You, if thou faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. So that's why I had to bring out, I'm going to teach you right now and move on so we can get out of here. That we've got to stay in the Word so our strength in the war that we're in can be strong. A weak man cannot fight, does not have victory. What makes you strong back there? Knowledge in the Word. Revelation knowledge in the word. Not man's wisdom makes us strong. Now let's look at Mark 7. Now this was a Greek woman here. The Syrophoenician woman's faith. Now watch this, what Jesus talks to her. How he, and how he talks to her. And from, th and from thence he arose and went uh, into the borders of Tyre and Sidon. And entered into a house and would have had no man know it, but he could not be hid. Why? Because the fame was going out so strong. He didn't want to have a lot of people, but he couldn't stop it. I tell you what, people start getting healed in this church. You ain't going to stop people from coming. See, signs, wonders, and miracles is a, is a billboard. Back in the days, we'd go on vacation. Every time I seen a billboard, I had McDonald's on. I'd stop and get something to eat. So, if signs and wonders is going out of this church, people are going to come. They, we're going to say, man, I want to see what happened. And we're no different than Jesus. We're no different than Peter. We're no different than Paul. And he said, no man, and for a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit, heard of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek. Now what did I say a while ago? Jesus come to the Jews. It wasn't this woman's time to come to Jesus. It was not the, uh, the Samaritan woman's time to go to Jesus. When was their time come? When he went to the cross. That's when our time come. Now listen, there was a, a, a side of Phoenician by nation and she besought him. He would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. Her, devil, her, her daughter was devil possessed. Well, you know, there's some people out there on YouTube just said, well, that's, that's a bad doctrine. You can call it whatever you want to. It's the doctrine of Christ. Now, for a certain woman whose young daughter, blah, 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 and it says now, in Mark 7, the woman was a Greek, and he wanted her to cast the devil, want him to cast the devil. But Jesus said, look what Jesus said. Look, 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 look. And Jesus said to her, let the children first be filled. Who? The Jews. That was God's children that Jesus come to at that time. The law was still going on until Jesus died. 
So, now watch this. Let the children, let, let, my, let the God's people be filled first. Now we're God's people, okay? Now he says, for it is not me to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs. He called that woman the dog. I also wouldn't go sit under his teaching calling people dogs. Come on now. It wasn't that woman's time to receive anything from Jesus. But what happened? And she said, with her faith, she said to her, for this saying, go thy way. And she said, and she answered and said unto him, yes, Lord, but the dogs under the table eat the crumbs of the children. It wasn't her time, but look, and she, uh, and he said to her, for this saying, go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy daughter, and when she was come to the house, she found the devil gone out of her daughter and laid upon the bed. Now what happened? Her faith was not moving in time, because it wasn't her time to go to Jesus. But with her faith, Jesus stepped out of time that he was walking on this earth, and moved in the spirit, and her daughter was made home. You understand this? Folks, we don't have to wait on time anymore. The minute we believe we receive, praise God, hallelujah, God answers then. And the minute we believe we receive, why wait on the manifestation? Huh? We don't have to, because faith rules over time. Let me show the last scripture here. Daniel 10, and I'm going to quote 2 Corinthians 1 20. It says, All of the promises of God are yes and amen. Now, what does that mean to you all? Come on, talk to me. For all of the promises of God are yes and amen. What does that mean? That means there that, that means you're going to get it. Why would we get it? Because we ask according to his will. Now, Daniel 10, I'm going to show you why, why, why we have to wait sometimes. Let's go back up there to Daniel 5, 3. Let's see what Daniel 3 says. Daniel 10, 3. That's right, it says. And in those days, I, Daniel, was mourning for three full weeks. Mourning. He was fasting. You ever seen anybody fasting? Yeah, Lord, I've been on fasting. Been on fast two days, two hours, and I'm so, I'm so tired, I'm so hungry. Lord Jesus. I ate no food for delight. There was the chocolate fudge cake. There was the pleasant bread. The King James says the pleasant bread. Don't go over there. It says, I ate no food, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all until three whole weeks were fulfilled. He fasted, thought he was fasting to get an answer, but he didn't. And in 20, on the 24th day of the first month, as I was by the south of the great river, which is Tigris, then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, and a certain man was clothed, ooh, Lord Jesus, clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold, praise God, and his body was, was, was like the burl, and his face looked like, like lightning, and his eyes were like Flames of fire. Now, who's he seeing? What's the Bible say about Jesus? Who's he seeing? He fasted 21 days and he had a vision. And now God's able to talk to him. Now, let's move on down to verse uh, 11. And he said unto me, Old Daniel, who's talking to him? God. And God said to Old Daniel, Old man, uh, old man great beloved, understand the words that I speak to you. There's hear and understand. You can't just hear the word of God preached. You've got to understand it. That's why word of faith preachers take time. They'll preach the same thing for a month. Because we've got to get it to understand it. All right? And he says, and stand upright for to you I am now sin. And when he had spoken this word to me, I stood up trembling. Oh, I believe by the vision of Jesus, but God, I, I didn't know where I could get up or not. But he stood up and was trembling. Then he said to me, then God said to him, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day, 
that you set your heart to understand and to chasten yourself, he got busy and he, he got himself in the place where he heard God. He chastened himself. Before your God, your words were heard. And I have come for your words. What's Jesus come to us for? Because of our words of faith. I've heard people say, well, Lord, you know, just give me whatever you don't give me. I'd be afraid to pray like that. Hey, Lord, God, you might get something you don't want. But the ruler of the kingdom of Persia, now there was no physical kingdom of uh, king, uh, uh, but the ruler, there was no prince of Persia in the natural. So, but the ruler of the kingdom of Persia, that was Satan he's talking about, withstood me 21 days. Now what goes on behind the, the scenes when you're praying? Look what happened there. It says Michael, well I don't know. <laughs> But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one in twenty days. But Michael, one of the chief princes, Michael was the archangel, the warring angel, came to help me. Now he came to help God. He's talking to God, speaking to Daniel, and God speaking to Daniel, and he said, "The prince of uh, Michael, the archangel, come to help me." The, now, now you say, "Why does God need any help?" Because Satan is the prince of the power of the air, the Bible says. Come on, somebody. Now, what happened here was that the minute Daniel got himself to understand and started doing what, getting himself to tune, he heard the voice of God. And he says, came to help me, the, Michael came to help the Lord, and I remain there with the kings of Persia. Now I am come. God is come. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days, for yet the vision is for many days. For when he had spoken, when the Lord had spoken such things, such words unto me, I set my face toward the ground, and I become dumb. I believe I couldn't speak neither if I had any. <clears throat> With the Lord. Amen. So what happened here? It took time. This world operates on time, okay? It took 21 days, even with the help of Michael the Archangel, to get Daniel's answer. But it didn't take no year. It didn't take two years. It didn't take four years. Folks, we're getting older. We've got to get with it. This church is going up. Yeah. So what have we got? Hebrews 1.14 says, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for us, not to us? So when we pray, send out those angels to do some warfare for us in the kingdom of God. There's things around that kingdom that's trying to withhold you from receiving what God's got for us. And so Michael had to come and help the Lord. So we have angels that go out and fight and warfare for us. In Hebrews 1.14 it said, Psalms 103 says, Angels obey the voice of the word. Brother Luke, if you speak the word of God, your voice, the angels hear. And they go forth to help you. But see, we've got to dispatch them in the name of Jesus. So, if we want to get quicker results, do like Daniel. He chases himself to understand, and God come and talk to him, and he said, now you understand that there's a warfare going on in the kingdom of God around it, and I have angels for you, and you need to dispatch those angels to go and war for you, even Michael the archangel. And guess what? That rules over time. So you see, I, I, I just, I kept reading this, reading this. We don't have to wait for 30 years to get an answer. We don't have to wait for two years to get that land. We don't have to wait 
for $700,000 to come to build a church for years. You don't have to wait for your healing to manifest. Praise God. Right now, I'm going to minister right now. I'm going to minister to Katrina. Come here, can I pray for you here? Come on up here, brother, look at me. I love the Lord of God, hallelujah. You understand that better than you do that hip hop, don't you? I'm saying that old stuff, can't you? Praise you for it. 
I give you all the glory, Father God, for this word that we've taught today, that, that, that the power of God's word is over everything. I thank you that these people are set free in the name of Jesus. I thank you for that, and I praise you for that. There's some hurt. We hope you enjoyed today's program, and we would like for you to come and join us for worship and fellowship. We meet every Sunday, 11 a.m. at the Knott County Sportsplex Conference Room in Hindley. Thank you from all of us at Faith Life Church. May God bless you and encourage you.